Welcome, welcome back, guys. Long time no see. <laughs> All right, so today we have another training session. It's uh, Tuesday, believe it or not, almost the end of the year. So let's get started. Let me actually start with the first position that we have to work on today. The one you saw on the thumbnail, we're going to get to in, in a moment. So this one is wide to move. So I'm gonna catch up with you here in the in the chat, but in the meantime, feel free to um, start working on this one. And like always, if you find it, let me know, just put in the answer. And at the same time, even if you just find candidate moves, feel free to bring them bring them up. Now, let me see if I have any comments. Well, South Africa in the house. Okay, I think I'm doing something wrong here. <laughs> let me just put it full. Okay, okay, okay. Let me see what's going on here. You guys should be able to see that unless I'm missing something. Okay, now I'm not sure if your comments are just not coming in. <laughs> Let me see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. How are you, mister? How are you? <laughs> All right, guys, give me at least candidate moves. I thought for a moment that the, the 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 comments were not coming in but it looks like you're just working on it just working on it test 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 all right we're good to go hello 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 all right now uh, uh, now we're good now we're good again if you for whatever reason i know you must be working on it now but if you just have candidate moves feel free to put them in here that way at least we start uh, narrowing it down and just to see how your intuition is. Yeah, white pieces to move, white pieces to move. Okay, first instant, there you go guys. And we, we, those of you who have been um, here for, for a while now, you know we look at checks, we look at captures, we look at threats. So this is one move, this is one move. These are three moves that we have to look into. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> okay, so let me see what I got here. Rook h6, g takes h6. Rook G7, Rook G7, King G7, Queen H5. Okay, Queen is already on H5. Rook H6, Pawn takes, if you do Rook G7 now, they could take with so many different pieces. So look into that one. <laughs> Resign or, well, come on, at least offer a draw first. <laughs> hello, 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 Israel, nice. All right, so we have chess players from all over the world and no one, no one can figure this one out. All right, so guys, I'll give you one more minute and then we just go over it after that. 
so far, no one has even mentioned the the right move. Nah, no excuse. Come on, come on, come on. King g8, queen h6. Yeah, but still, rook g7. No, okay, you said rook h6, pawn takes. Okay, rook g8. Okay, 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 okay. But then, after I take, whatever you do, my queen is right on time to come and defend. Rook h6, queen d1. Queen d1. Mm. I don't think it's that forcing. There are things they could do about that. Knight h6. All right, so you're up to speed, my friend. You're up to speed then. Now, that's why now that you did that, at least we're going to be on a weekly basis doing these sessions on Tuesdays. We're going to be playing on, th on Thursdays. Uh, every Saturday, there's a new lesson coming out. And of course, in the description, guys, I always leave you books that you can work on. So, Or you could do your regular tactics and, and play and so on. All right, so let's go over it. Rook g5 to torture my opponent. Be careful, it could, it could backfire. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, guys, let's go over this one and let's boil it down. And the reason why I put this position here is to reinforce something that we have been talking about little by little. Um, if we evaluate the position, don't forget, um, we have talked about this, evaluate the position. If you're in a critical moment in the game, you are in you're doing an exercise like this, it doesn't hurt to evaluate the position. Of course, we want to get to a point where our intuition is developed enough, we have enough experience so that we don't even have to evaluate the position, so that we just look at the board and certain patterns pop up. We're not there yet, so it doesn't hurt to evaluate. So if we look at the pawn structure, definitely better for, for black. They are even up a pawn. If we look at piece coordination, then we could say, well, it's better for the white pieces. Look at these rooks, look at the queen, look at the knight perfectly placed in the center, defended by a pawn. And guys, you could evaluate the position or not. Maybe you just looked at it and you're like, there has to be something here for white with all of these pieces close by, so well coordinated. Well, if that, whatever the case is, it's going to boil down to the point of, um, how do we call it? Well, the point that we're putting pressure on. As the white pieces, look at these rooks. They're both putting pressure on g7. So I'm going to look at my checks. I'm going to look at my captures. If they do not work and free free to calculate rook g7, it's not going to work. Rook h6 doesn't work. So then we look at threats. So I hope that all of you have that already ingrained. And that's something else. We need to get to a point where we don't have to go like a checklist. It has to be like a reflex. You look at the checks, captures, and then we look at threats. So what move can we do to add more pressure to that point we are already targeting? So how can we put more pressure on G7? Take your time and don't rush. Queen takes pawn. You're more, more than welcome, my friend. More than welcome. <laughs> So that's your task. Just give me candidate moves that add more pressure to that pawn on g7. And again, we get to that conclusion because our piece is already looking at that uh, pawn on g7. Okay, I'm going to assume that you meant n, and I, we don't really care, I know. Okay, there you go, 98. Guys, 98 is a move that we have to consider. If you didn't consider it, then this is something that we have to continue to work on. If you did and gave up on it prematurely, same thing, we have to be aware of these things. Now, 98, we are ready to just go rook g7, rook takes, rook takes back with a fork, so the queen has to take and we just win material right now. Now, what, is the other, what are the other lines we have to calculate? Well, if 98, they could take with a rook, they could take with the queen. If they take with the queen, well, check. When they take, I take back with check and then my queen is taking over here. If 98 rook takes, then take, and then you have this fork. So this is, again, the difficult part is 
thinking of this move. I'm pretty sure that all of you at this point in the course, you're able to calculate all of this, but we have to come to, we have to consider this. And with so many checks, we tend to forget these kind of moves. So 98 guys, nothing they could do about it. One more time, if we had, let's say rook e8, then rook g7, queen g7, and then we simply collect. And we have queen versus knight and rook, and we have, of course, an extra pawn. So I hope that this makes sense. Let me bring on the other exercise before we... Uh, and by the way, in the meantime, if you have any questions about this one, just let me know. And then this one is the one that you saw on the thumbnail. Now, this is, believe it or not, a game played by Botvinnik, the legendary Botvinnik. And after knight g5, h6, he simply went knight e4. Now, the better move is, of course, knight f7. Now, of course, there's no way he didn't consider knight f7 as a candidate move, but probably he was just, he didn't see anything concrete and he decided to go with a more practical move like knight e4. Now, something else to keep in mind is that he was probably already getting into time pressure. So sometimes, and I put a, a post in the community tab yesterday about this. One of the main skills is to know what lines not to calculate in order to make a decision. So sometimes we're calculating, calculating nonsense. And yes, it's useful, but then we have two minutes left and we end up making mistakes in time pressure. So he made a practical decision, 94. But the question to you is, after knight f7, king f7, how should we continue? I mentioned we could do rook d7, we could do queen g4, we could do queen h5. Those are the candidate moves. Now, let's see how far you can calculate. Give me whatever you get, and then we will go from here, okay? Um, you mean in the other one? After 98, rook f7? Okay, let me go back, Richard. So 98, if they go, you mean 97 right here? Well, here you have rook g7, rook g7, rook g7, rook g7. I, I think we could make something work with knight f6. And you see, that's something with, I didn't even mention it. We have to consider these things. So I think rook takes, rook takes, rook takes. This has to be, yeah. This, and you know, this is even mate. So if they go here, check and then mate so i think that's what that's that's what this is about if of course they take with this rook well we have the same idea and then this is mate as well so there you go uh probably you guys considered that we should have we should have so anyways we go to the next one sorry for that saludos nicolas saludos saludos <laughs> Bueno, ahí, ahí te puse en el chat. Vamos a ver cuándo cuando llegamos. <laughs> Después de ti. All right, you got it. So, what to do after knight takes, king takes? Guys, even if you don't find the answer, the fact that we calculate, this is what we're looking for. That's what's going to help us improve our ability to visualize, to calculate. Rook d7 and then queen f3. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. The important thing is now go back, review it, and see what mistakes you made. Was it in the opening? Was it in the middle game? What was the why? Why did you make it? 
And look, these tournament games ultimately are part of your training. So this is one of the best things we have to, to improve and to learn. No worries. So look, we got to this position. This is a game played by Bodbinik. And after h6, he decided to go knight e4. So the question, but we know now that knight f7 was crushing. Knight f7 was winning. But the question is, how deep into it can we calculate after king takes? And the candidate moves are going to be queen g4, queen h5, um, or rook d7, of course, after the king takes. <laughs> Oof, yeah, that, those hurt. Those hurt because those are games that we lose, not because the other person is better, a better chess player in general, it's just they knew a trap that we didn't know. So go back, review your openings, and that's why, guys, it's important that we have, we know the lines that we that we play, at least the main ideas and so on. I was actually talking to Roberto this morning about that. Um, especially for Roberto, he should, he should be focusing more in middle and end game so his openings, he doesn't need anything fancy, just something to get to the middle to the middle game. Okay, so rook d7. Hey, hey, mister. <laughs> uh, after knight d4. Ah, you know what? You're, you're very smart. You're ahead of the game. <laughs> well, there could be traps. Um, doesn't take back our knight. Well, that's a good point. If we take and they don't take us back, we're up a pawn and we destroyed that the king's defenses so after we could even do knight h6 but even if we just leave like go to d6 we're already ahead in material right so that we don't even have to worry about it now here guys the move was actually after knight e4 king takes if we play queen h5 then i think i think king g king g8 and i'm not sure how we're going to continue i think they have time to bring pieces and defend. And if we go rook d7, I think I would just go rook e7. And this, this piece is not, going, it's not going to be doing much. If you go queen h5, I could even go back. This is more than defended. So the powerful move, and again, it's just like the move we did in the first exercise. It's not a check. So that's why it's harder to consider. But here, after queen g4, we have a huge advantage. We're hitting g7 and we still have rook d7 in the air so what could they do well something like bishop f8 to defend g7 and then we continue with bishop e4 now again this is guys for many of you is the next level can we consider these moves where it's not so clear it's not so forcing and the more we train this the easier it will easier it will be for you to be like you know what I don't see all the way until the end, and you don't have to calculate all the way until the end every time. But I know that I have compensation, I have more pieces to attack than they have defender, defenders, and things like that. So definitely knight f7 was a move, followed by queen g4. And at this point, um, even if they go knight e5, um, I think we could do... Can we do... Queen f4 or queen h5? Oh, I think it doesn't really matter. Hmm. Queen e5, and then if they go bishop e4, I think now we have rook d7. Yep, and there's nothing they could do to stop us from taking on g7, guys. Even rook e7, we take, and then queen g7, checkmate. Now, Again, this was just for you to, even if you couldn't find it, the fact that we're calculating, even if it's nonsense, is helping us. Now, you mentioned something very, very clever. Did he play knight e4 to play knight f6? Well, in this game, after knight e4, um, bishop f8 was played, and then rook d7 was another miss by Podbinik. Guys, we're talking about one of the legendary players of all times. He did not go for knight f6 either, and knight f6 is completely crushing now again probably he was entering or he was already in time pressure and this is something that we're trying to also reinforce at this point in the course when do we have to go in and calculate as much as we can when do we have to go with a more practical decision here if you think about it but is actually improving his pieces rook on the seventh rank everyone knows that's good for us Oop, what did i do <laughs> 
What did I do? What did I do? Okay, there we go. So everyone knows Rook, Rook, the seven, Rook on the seventh rank is powerful. We have a pair of bishops, pretty active, knight in the center. So he's improving his position and saving time. So when should we save time? When should we calculate and look for that combination? So the main thing is if you want to calculate knight f6, what to do after the pawn takes was the right continuation. So I'm going to give you some time here and also any comments, any questions, just let us know, okay? <laughs> These guys are busy, they're busy calculating, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, with, I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. It just it opening traps. It hurts. It hurts. No, uh, at the end we're gonna. If anyone is down for a game, we're definitely going to do that as well. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we have Queen G4. Absolutely, guys. Queen G4, but still we have to calculate if Queen G4. What if the king goes to h7? Try to continue from here. Nope, not so quickly, not so quickly. Today I'm accepting it. Okay, bishop e4, that's the move. Guys, if we go queen g4, king h7, and then we take with uh, bishop f6, I'm not so sure you're gonna be able to convert this, because now knight e7 is coming over to defend, g7 is defended, and you also have to deal with this. So we have to be very careful. Easily, uh, our advantage could just evaporate. So we have to be very careful. Now the move, is indeed bishop e4 putting more pressure we talked this is a, an idea that we saw for the first time on lesson 79 bobby fisher with his king's indian attack many times we saw this bishop coming from the fianchetto to e4 to start hitting the king on the king side now if they go something like f5 we simply take and after the king goes to g8 what is the next move what is the, the final move here to just or actually the final idea still not so easy, but if you take your time, I know that you're going to find it. So, why to move? What do we do? Queen of six. Mm -mm. Nope, I think. No, I don't think Queen of six is going to cut it. Mm -mm. Nope. Guys, don't forget, there are ideas even with 95. There are even ideas with 95. Think, think, think. Queen f6, queen f6. Everyone is going with queen f6 except for, okay, queen g4. Now, compare queen g4 to queen f6. Does it make any difference? Queen g4, look, if we go queen f6, 95 blocking, bishop takes, rook takes, queen takes, and now we have queen queen, rook, and I have two bishops. And I think bishop h1 could really could be really, really annoying, threatening checkmate. So instead, the move is queen g4, king h7, we cannot do the checkmate, so now the final rook d7 comes in. I'm threatening uh, rook takes f7, if they try to block with 97, then we simply take, don't forget, if they take with the bishop, that's a nice deflection. If they take with the rook instead, then we're going to go in with queen f5. King has to go to g8. And then guys, what is the final continuation here? Hey, hey, Ed, what's going on? Ed is, is just uh, too busy with his dragon Sicilian. <laughs> Yeah, rook d7, okay, at this point, yeah, rook d7 had to come in. At this point, what do we do? What do we do? 
Okay, now we play queen f6, guys. Now queen f6, now there's nothing they could do. There's nothing they could do. There's no interference. Queen h8 is happening. And of course, uh, there's just nothing they could do about that, right? Now, let me, queen f6, queen f6, perfect. Now, let me go ahead and go all the way back to this moment. And again, guys, just by reviewing this game, you are improving your training your calculation, your visualization a lot. Just look at knight f7 and everything that we said, if I'm doing it on my own, I'm just trying to do it in my head. It's gonna get blurry at some point, that's fine. At least I tried and that's how you get better. After when bishop f8, knight f6, then I calculate. Calculate, calculate, calculate. And then if you want, you move the pieces, but you have to force yourself to do it in your head first. <laughs> All right. We have only a couple more. So let me give you this one. And this one, guys, I just want to know if you're playing this in a game, what move would you do? And I'm going to give you the top three candidate moves. Top three candidate moves are going to be knight g5, knight e to g5. We got knight f to g5. And of course, we have bishop g5. So take your time. And of course, don't rush. Don't, don't rush. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone says that, but you know, they just. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, we cannot help you there. We cannot help you. No, no, no. Music stays. Richard prohibited to eliminate it. Guys, you have to be able to calculate with music, with distractions. If you have never been to a chess tournament, we expect them to be extremely quiet, no noise, but there's constant noise. People talking. People finish their game and they're not respectful, so they keep talking about the game. Someone screaming in the hall. Uh, someone on the, ne on the next room. <laughs> this tournament that we were playing, um, there was the, the World Cup, the fo uh, football or soccer World Cup was going on. So some people were watching it and they would scream from time to time. So all of that distraction, if you don't train with music, with things like that, it's going to really get to you in your tournament game. So I'm not uh, justifying this, but just keep it in mind, okay? No, man, I, I can only do that if you give me permission. So I don't think it's going to happen. Okay, but wait, wait. if you give me a knight move, you got to be specific. Are we talking about the knight e to g5? Are we talking... Knight F to G5. Ed, if you knew, I'd never, ever since I was a kid, I like to play sports, especially soccer, but I don't like to watch it. So I was the kid that I would be ready to play, just go and play. My friends were indoors watching the, the games and I'll be like, come on. So never, not even now. I, I just, that, look, I don't even watch chess games. What can I tell you? I like to play it. The only sport that I... I'm happy to watch, but I don't do it. But if I had to pick, it would be basketball because it's faster. It's just score, score, score. Soccer or football is just like 90 minutes for one or two. Come on. So I'll always wait to see the, the highlights. And that was me. But that's me. All right. So knight e to g5, knight f to g5. Yes, yes, yes. Guys, the Carol can is a legendary opening and one thing about it is that it's very very solid it's hard for the white pieces to get anything out of it it's a solid solid opening if you compare it for example with the french you even have your bishop open to develop it it's not blocked by a pawn but yes very solid and and yeah so i understand i understand <laughs> <laughs> well look to me there's another thing i stopped even following soccer at all when ronaldinho retired like to me that was the that's been the best ever so when ronaldinho stopped playing i didn't care ever about even the highlights that's it <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, no, but look, if that's what you play, that's your opening, you review it, you prepare it, you're going to be fine. Okay, guys, look, this position, I only want, wanted to show it to you because in this position, it, I think this was John Nunn um, playing as the, as the white pieces, and in, in his book, he uses this position to explain how uh, he went with knight to e2 g5, even though it was not the best move, like bishop g5 gives white a huge advantage, same thing for knight f to g5, Knight e to g5 is not as powerful, but it was a practical decision. It certainly puts pressure positionally. It makes sense. So he just went with it and in, in an effort to save time. So he explains how, yes, I could have calculated all of this with the complications and so on, but that would probably require me X amount of time. And then I have, I'm, I have the risk of getting into time pressure and making silly mistakes there. So he's like, you know what? Instead of calculating everything until the end, I just went with a practical decision, knight e to g5, and the game continued with that. So I think knight f6 was played, queen d3, g6, um, knight takes d4, knight takes d4, and then after d5, knight takes h7, and he ends up um, getting a pretty powerful attack on the king. So I just wanted to, again, reinforce this. All of the exercises today, we've been talking about this, and it's extremely important that at this point in the course, we at least start listening to this, right? So with that in mind, <laughs> yeah, very powerful, very powerful player and very good uh, author as well, guys. So look, with that done, with that said, there is only one more position I want to share with you. And that's going to be this one. Pretty simple, nothing too crazy. Um, black pieces to move, in my opinion, is a pretty ordinary position, but I just want to know what you guys would play here. You're the black pieces, try to evaluate the position, try to get a feeling for it, and let me know what you play as black. Thank you, Giovanni. Thank you, thank you. Pedro, Pedro, ¿cómo está todo? <laughs> yeah, and with very, very nice, very, very nice games. Um, guys, those of you who have not played your, your, over, your first over-the-board tournament yet, um, I, I always say it, it's a whole different experience. You're going to look at chess very differently. And Pedro and Roberto, they actually experienced that recently and they, they agree. It's just, it's just a whole new, whole new level. Rook B8. Okay, so I'm assuming, I'm thinking that you mentioned in Rook G1. So I'm going to take that as a candidate move. There you go, there you go. <laughs> now, I was talking to Roberto, and he was like, I want to do it again, I want to do it again. And that's that's how it is, guys. Once you play, you come back from that first tournament, you feel it. Hey, hey, hey. How are you, mister? Long time no see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're here in an attempt to improve our chess. This is a never-ending never story. <laughs> No worries, my friend. It's always going to be, um, it's always going to be left on the YouTube channel, so you can check it out anytime. Okay, but thanks for dropping by and saying hi. Before the month ends, hundred percent. Before the month ends. So what do we have? Two more days? No, one more day. All right. So. We have some time. Moves that should come to mind are, of course, knight c2, rook g1. <laughs> well, look, the move here indeed is rook g1. So if you thought of that move, excellent. If you did not even consider it, okay, so then that's something to make note of, guys. We look at checks, we look at captures. Oh, this is not even possible. And we look at threats. So this is another capture. Threats, threats. And of course, you have this, if they take, we have this pattern with the fork. 
So after Rook G1, if I think in the game they did something like um, Queen F4, was it Queen F4? Mm, well, I don't remember, but I, I guess it makes sense. Hmm. Yeah, Queen F4, G5, yeah, 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 okay, G5, E5 was played, Pawn takes, Pawn takes, King F6, and this is just way better for the black pieces. Interesting, if you guys want to take a screenshot and see if you can finish it against the engine, so that's something that I would do if I'm reviewing this on my own, but at this point, it's just very simple what we should we should be doing. The king is going to take care of the pawn, this one is going to fall, and of course, this knight is just a monster in the center. So again, ordinary, ordinary position, nothing fancy, but this is very realistic to what we would get in a real game. So, <laughs> so let me see, queen h4, 92, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -mm -mm -mm. You know, never, never tried it. I, I, when I, when I was in college, I know there were this group of uh, people that would get together to play, and I would pass by and, and see it, but I'd never, never actually tried it. But it looked very interesting, and from what they, from what I heard, it's the same thing. Strategy, very, some elements very similar to chess, to chess as well. Okay, guys, I'm gonna drop it here. If there's anyone down to play a game, feel free to send me a challenge. Let me just. Make this full, and there we go. Okay, I got already a challenge right here. Completely up to you what time control you want to use. By the way, guys, on Saturday, you're going to see uh, a lesson, lesson 193 or 94. It's going to be about the Groomfield defense. So we're going to start seeing the Groomfield defense. Now c5, nah. let me play d5. <laughs> well, uh, nothing we can do about that, my friend. c5 maybe? Let's go with c5. <laughs> you got it, mister. And thanks for dropping by. I'll see you guys uh, on Thursday. And then on Saturday, new lesson coming out. Okay, so should we do bishop g4? Yeah, why not? Okay, I'm gonna take. Now I'm playing fast. This is a three minute game, no increment. Now we made it to the middle game. Now we just play chess, okay? Now, do we have any in-between moves? No, not really, so we just take. Hmm, queen d4 or c takes d4. Does this make any sense? Probably, probably, probably. Now here guys, now we have even ideas with d3. Okay, let me double up first. If rook c1, then we could take advantage of that pin. Okay, so they didn't let us. All right, now, no need to rush here. Checks, nah. Crowded D3 now made sense. Oh no, this is a, this is a blunder. Yeah, we just put pressure, pressure. Our opponent is just gonna collapse. We put pressure, take or take, or none of the above. 
Um, Active King, guys. Active King. And checkmate. Yep, so I don't know how accurate. Let me see. Let me see how accurate we played that. Um, game review. <laughs> okay, so look, not very good, 86%. But let's see the end game, which is what I'm more interested on. So this is all. Okay, so C takes the four was more accurate or inaccuracy with 96. Bishop G4 mistake. So as long as I don't take on D4, I'm not doing what the engine wants. But it does make sense, guys. Just uh, define what you want to do on D4, then you continue with your plan. Bishop G4, I knew it couldn't be that good. I'm offering my pair of bishops. Yeah, knight B to D2, knight D7. Yeah, here I have to take E5. Rook b1, yep, not as accurate. Here they're offering me the pair of bishops. Probably I should have taken it right away, but I'm just looking for ways to create something. So f4, I have to take. Then d4, uh, I had to do this. If not, that pawn is going to be a target for them the entire game. So pawn takes, queen takes. And now the less pieces they have, like with their queen gone, they need to use their rooks to defend that pawn. Rook c3. At some point, I don't know if D3 should have been played. Yeah, blunder. Uh, this again, we just take on B3. Bring the king to the game. Yeah. Take. Now here, I don't know if this made sense. Yeah, I guess it made sense. The other move was Rook C7, more prophylactic. And that's it, guys. All right, so let me go ahead and just take one more game. And that's going to be it. All right, so we're playing as the white pieces. Hey, what's going on here? Mm, yeah. What happened? What happened? Oh no, we're black. Okay, I thought I thought I was the white pieces, but no. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay, guys, our Pierce, def Pierce defense main opening that we've learned in this course, and we have so many lessons on it. My opponent seems to be playing... Okay, is this a free pawn? Richard, is this safe? <laughs> Guys, uh, those of you who are joining again, for some reason, not for some reason, I pressed by mistake and I ended the stream. <laughs> so let's see. Okay, so some of you are still back. Sorry about that. Um, all right, so look, when we take that pawn... No, it was me. It was me that I pressed by mistake and I, I ended it. <laughs> so look, when we take that pawn, yes, we get a free pawn, but we fall behind in development. So that's the main thing that we have to be careful with. Look, my opponent understands that, so he's going full attacking mode. Let's see what we could do. Yeah, it was me. It was me. It was me, guys. Okay, I'm going to take queen a5. <laughs> I drove I drove all of you guys crazy. Okay, Bishop G4. Again, those of you who have been following me, uh, have been with me for from the beginning on lesson 70, we talked about this. We play the peers, defense, they create this crazy attack. We're going to delay castling, we play queen a5, and if things get ugly, we just castle to the queen side. But right now, I'm up a pawn. They have to they have to checkmate me here. Okay. Um, yeah, it looks like they're going to check me. Um, hmm. Okay, does this make sense or... Yeah, take a break and look. If when you come back from the break, just take, um, just train. Don't play games. Just do a little bit of training, 
do some tactics and then get back in a little bit little do a few tactics do a little bit of training and so on okay so i think this is trapped queen yep well um bring it on now yeah, but look seriously guys we've talked about that many times here if you train consistently of course you're gonna start see you're gonna see an improvement okay so how do we convert this what's the best way to do that i like this check i like 95 i like just castling if i could do them all at once right <laughs> uh, okay let me go 95. this check is always there so no rush now happy to simplify the game happy to take the pawn i think that even if they play h3 we could take anyways yeah they, they know that okay let me do my check Absolutely, look, absolutely. Um, folk guys, everyone knows tactics is 90% of the game. Backbone of everything you do is tactics. Now, if you feel like that's a weak point, then every time you could, all the time you could invest in learning openings, just focus on tactics, focus on the, on the middle game. And then make sure that you read something about strategy, positional chess. But you could be the best uh, player uh, when it comes to strategy. If you miss a fork, if you miss a pin, if you miss a checkmate, was the point so tactics has to be your priority all right so i'm just gonna make sure i don't blunder any silly mistakes is the only thing that's gonna make me lose this game we're winning by a lot okay so check 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 now this is a very powerful knight defending f7 attacking g4 oof g4 Okay, now I'm gonna try to get fancy, not necessary. Um, but my point is to just try to bring the rook over. So they're saying, nope, there we go. So now we're putting pressure on that rook. Guys, not necessary, we're winning by so much, but let's see. Yes, end game is important as well, but um, if you're not making it to the end game, you gotta think about that. Okay, so, oof, so many things here to do. Take, take, I thought G3 was pretty good. Well, typically when it comes to strategy, you just read the book like you read any other book. The, the one thing I was talking to Roberto today, guys, when you read strategy books or you watch videos, whatever you do, just make sure that make sure that you actually re read it more than once. Like if you finish, if you're reading a, a strategy book, right, or end games book, you finished, well, go ahead and read it again, read it a third time. And that's just like with tactics, with tactics, it didn't take one forks exercise to master the forks. You had to do it over and over, do like 200, 300, 1,000 forks to get there. With strategy, the same thing. If you learn something about the principle of the two weaknesses, one, two, three examples, that's not enough. You gotta see multiple ones to, to really get the hang of it. So guys, that said, uh, I'm going to leave it here. Sorry about what happened before uh, my finger. But uh, I hope that you found some value in today's session. Nothing too fancy, just some tactics training. And Thursdays, we get to just play, pure just games. And on Saturday, Lesson 193, 94 is coming out. This time, we're going to talk about the Grunfeld defense. So we'll see. After that lesson, depending on your feedback, we could go and learn the, the Grunfeld step by step, or we simply 
put it aside, continue focusing on middle and end game. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Tato, he simply, he was born with that. It's, there's nothing, nothing we could do. <laughs> Bye, 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 bye. These guys don't have a like button, guys. Don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for being here. See you on Thursday and then on Saturday.